Hello there. I'm so glad you're continuing this journey with me through the Bible. Today is day number 239, and we read 1 Chronicles 6, our first reading in Proverbs 16, and we reread Ephesians 5. Let's turn to 1 Chronicles 6. Yesterday we heard details about the leaders of three tribes, Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. First Chronicles 6 Heading The Family Line of the High Priests Levi had three sons, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Kohath had four sons, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. Amram had two sons, Aaron and Moses, and one daughter, Miriam. Aaron had four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. The descendants of Eleazar from generation to generation are as follows, Phinehas, Abishua, Buki, Uzi, Zerahia, Merayoth, Amaria, Ahitub, Zadok, Ahimaaz, Azaria, Johanan, Azaria, the one who served in the temple which King Solomon built in Jerusalem, Amaria, Ahitub, Zadok, Shalom, Hilkia, Azaria, Saraya, Jehozadak. King Nebuchadnezzar deported Jehozadak along with the other people of Judah and Jerusalem, whom the Lord sent into exile. Heading Other Descendants of Levi Levi had three sons, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Each of them also had sons. Gershon was the father of Libni and Shimei. Kohath was the father of Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. And Merari was the father of Mahli and Mushi. These were the descendants of Gershon from generation to generation, Libni, Jahath, Zimma, Joah, Edo, Zerah, Jeatherai. These are the descendants of Kohath from generation to generation, Aminadab, Korah, Asir, Elkanah, Abiasaf, Asir, Tahath, Uriel, Uziah, Shaul. Elkanah had two sons, Amasai and Ahimoth. These were Ahimoth's descendants from generation to generation, Elkanah, Zophai, Nahath, Eliab, Jeroham, Elkanah. Samuel had two sons, Joel, the older, and Abijah, the younger. These are the descendants of Merari from generation to generation, Mahli, Libni, Shimei, Uza, Shimea, Haggia, Asaya. Heading The Temple Musicians These are the men whom King David put in charge of the music at the place of worship in Jerusalem after the covenant box was moved there. They took regular turns of duty at the tent of the Lord's presence during the time before King Solomon built the temple. The family lines of those who held this office are as follows. The clan of Kohath. Haman, the leader of the first choir, was the son of Joel. His family line went back to Jacob as follows. Haman, Joel, Samuel, Elkanah, Jeroham, Eliel, Toa, Zuf, Elkanah, Mahath, Amasai, Elkanah, Joel, Azaria, Zephania, Tahath, Asir, Ebiasaf, Korah, Izhar, Kohath, Levi, Jacob. Asaf was leader of the second choir. His family line went back to Levi as follows. Asaf, Berechia, Shimei, Mikael, Baaseya, Malkija, Ethni, Zera, Adaya, Ethan, Zima, Shimei, 
Jahath, Gershon, Levi. Athan of the clan of Marari was leader of the third choir. His family line went back to Levi as follows. Athan, Kishi, Abdi, Maluk, Hashabia, Amazia, Hilkia, Amzi, Bani, Shemer, Mahli, Mushi, Marari, Levi. The other Levites were assigned all the other duties at the place of worship. Heading The Descendants of Aaron Aaron and his descendants presented the offerings of incense and offered the sacrifices that were burnt on the altar. They were responsible for all the worship in the most holy place and for the sacrifices by which God forgives Israel's sins. They did all this in accordance with the instructions given by Moses, God's servant. This is the line of Aaron's descendants, Eleazar, Phinehas, Abishua, Buki, Uzi, Zarahiah, Marioth, Amaria, Ahitub, Zadok, Ahimaaz. Heading, Where the Levites Lived This is the territory assigned to the descendants of Aaron of the clan of Kohath. They received the first share of the land assigned to the Levites. This included Hebron in the territory of Judah and the pasture lands around it. The fields and villages, however, that belonged to the city were assigned to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. The following towns were assigned to Aaron's descendants— Hebron, a city of refuge, Jatir, and the towns of Libna, Eshtemoa, Helen, Debir, Ashan, and Beth Shemesh, with their pasture lands. In the territory of Benjamin, they were assigned the following towns with their pasture lands, Geba, Alemeth, and Anathoth. This made a total of thirteen towns for all their families to live in. Ten towns in the territory of West Manasseh were assigned by lot to the rest of the clan of Kohath, family by family. To the clan of Gershon, family by family, were assigned thirteen towns in the territories of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and East Manasseh in Bashan. In the same way, twelve towns in the territories of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun were assigned to the clan of Merari, family by family. In this way, the people of Israel assigned towns for the Levites to live in, together with the pasture lands around the towns. The towns in the territories of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, mentioned above, were also assigned by drawing lots. Some of the families of the clan of Kohath were assigned towns and pasture lands in the territory of Ephraim. Shechem, the city of refuge in the hills of Ephraim, Gezer, Jokmeam, Beth Horon, Aijalon, and Gath Rimon. In the territory of West Manasseh, they were assigned the towns of Aner and Bileam with the surrounding pasture lands. The families of the clan of Gershon were assigned the following towns with the surrounding pasture lands. In the territory of East Manasseh, Golan in Bashan and Ashtaroth. In the territory of Issachar, Kedesh, Daberath, Ramoth and Anem. In the territory of Asher, Mashal, Abdon, Hukok and Rehob. In the territory of Naphtali, Kedesh in Galilee, Hamon, and Kiriathim. The remaining families of the clan of Merari were assigned the following towns with the surrounding pasture lands. In the territory of Zebulun, Rimono, and Tabor. In the territory of Reuben, east of the Jordan River beyond Jericho, Bezer on the plateau, Jahza. Kademoth, and Mepha'ath. In the territory of Gad, Ramoth in Gilead, Manah, Mahanaim, Heshbon, and Jazer. Let's turn to Proverbs 16. 
Today's collection of Proverbs contains a favorite one. Ask the Lord to bless your plans, and you will be successful in carrying them out. Verse 3. Proverbs 16. We may make our plans, but God has the last word. You may think everything you do is right, but the Lord judges your motives. Ask the Lord to bless your plans, and you will be successful in carrying them out. Everything the Lord has made has its destiny, and the destiny of the wicked is destruction. The Lord hates everyone who is arrogant. He will never let them escape punishment. Be loyal and faithful and God will forgive your sin. Obey the Lord, and nothing evil will happen to you. When you please the Lord, you can make your enemies into friends. It is better to have a little honestly earned than to have a large income dishonestly gained. You may make your plans, but God directs your actions. The king speaks with divine authority. His decisions are always right. The Lord wants weights and measures to be honest and every sale to be fair. Kings cannot tolerate evil because justice is what makes a government strong. A king wants to hear the truth and will favor those who speak it. A wise person will try to keep the king happy. If the king becomes angry, someone may die. The king's favor is like the clouds that bring rain in the springtime. Life is there. It is better, much better, to have wisdom and knowledge than gold and silver. Those who are good travel a road that avoids evil. So watch where you're going. It may save your life. Let's return to Ephesians 5 and read it again. Although today's chapter does not contain an instance of the theme words joined in union with Christ, this chapter contains the highest example and explanation of that oneness. Ephesians 5 Since you are God's dear children, you must try to be like Him. Your life must be controlled by love just as Christ loved us and gave his life for us as a sweet-smelling offering and sacrifice that pleases God. Since you are God's people, it is not right that any matters of sexual immorality or indecency or greed should even be mentioned among you, nor is it fitting for you to use language which is obscene, profane, or vulgar. Rather, you should give thanks to God. You may be sure that no one who is immoral, indecent, or greedy, for greed is a form of idolatry, will ever receive a share in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Do not let anyone deceive you with foolish words. It is because of these very things that God's anger will come upon those who do not obey Him. So have nothing at all to do with such people. You yourselves used to be in the darkness, but since you have become the Lord's people, you are in the light. So you must live like people who belong to the light, for it is the light which brings a rich harvest of every kind of goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the worthless things that people do, things that belong to the darkness. Instead, bring them out to the light. 
It's really too shameful even to talk about the things they do in secret. And when all things are brought out to the light, then their true nature is clearly revealed, for anything that is clearly revealed becomes light. That is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, and rise from death, and Christ will shine on you. So be careful how you live. Don't live like ignorant people, but like wise people. Make good use of every opportunity you have, because these are evil days. Don't be fools then, but try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Do not get drunk with wine, which will only ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with the words of psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Sing hymns and psalms to the Lord with praise in your hearts. In the name of our Lord Christ Jesus, always give thanks for everything to God the Father. Submit yourselves to one another because of your reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as to the Lord, for a husband has authority over his wife just as Christ has authority over the church, and Christ is himself the Savior of the church, his body. And so wives must submit themselves completely to their husbands just as the church submits itself to Christ. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. He did this to dedicate the church to God by his word after making it clean by washing it in water in order to present the church to himself in all its beauty, pure and faultless, without spot or wrinkle or any other imperfection. Men ought to love their wives just as they love their own bodies. A man who loves his wife loves himself. None of us ever hate our own bodies. Instead, we feed them and take care of them, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. As the scripture says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife, and the two will become one. There is a deep secret truth revealed in this scripture, which I understand as applying to Christ and the church. But it also applies to you. Every husband must love his wife as himself and every wife must respect her husband. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we praise and give honor to you as the head of the church, which is your body on earth. Lord, continue your work of perfecting your body so that it will better reflect your glory. Help all of us to take verse 21 to heart, which says, Submit yourselves to one another because of your reverence for Christ. This means that no one of us, whether we be pastors, husbands, employers, or parents, are above submitting to the ones we are leading. If we are leaders, we are out in front, but not above. Only you are above, and we are all parts of your body. Help my listener, if he is a husband, to love his wife sacrificially, mirroring the way you died to save your bride, the church. Help my listener, if she is a wife, to so respect her husband that he will feel empowered and encouraged to function as the head of his family. 
what joy there is in functioning as you designed us, Lord. May all this be done so that we can be a visible representation of your body here on earth and so give you glory. Glory. 